In this video, we're going to look at solar power cells, which are also called photovoltaic cells. Why do we, why do we use the term cell? Because they produce electricity, just like other cells, like battery cells. Okay, what do they do? Well, they sit on top of roofs or in big open fields, maybe on the side of highways, and they catch sunlight and convert that sunlight into electricity. How does this work? Let's take a look. Here is a photovoltaic cell connected by a circuit to your house. And there are three basic layers that go into a photovoltaic cell. There's the N-type layer on bottom, a gap layer, and the P-type layer. Now, here's how this works. The N-type layer has an excess of free electrons. So they want to run away from each other, right? They want to get over to this place where there aren't free electrons. But they can't jump across this gap. To get across the gap, they need a little energy. Where's the energy come from? A photon of light. It passes through the p-type, shines on one of these electrons, and the electron absorbs it, gaining the energy it needs to jump across. In its wake, it leaves a positive ion, which it just left. So there's now a positive ion, so what's this electron do? It wants to go back to the positive ion and rejoin, but it can't just go straight down. The only path it has to get back to the positive ion is through the circuit, which supplies energy to the house. And now it joins back with the positive ion, recombining. This is called a solar power cell or a photovoltaic cell. And what are we doing? We're taking the solar energy of the photon and converting it into electrical energy. An important equation for solar panels these types of solar power panels, uh, they require a big area. That's one of the reasons why they're not totally ubiquitous, uh, because there's, this is a drawback. To get a significant amount of power, you need a big area which faces the sun. So what equation relates power and area? It's the intensity equation. The intensity of light equals the power that the light carries, divided by the area that the light strikes. The light shines down with some intensity. If you want to convert that intensity into a large power, you will need a large area. When we build these solar panels, we don't just put one cell by itself. To get enough electricity requires tons of these in parallel and in series. And so when you look at the panels on someone's house, you are seeing a bunch of these little solar cells. There's a second type of solar panel that you probably haven't heard of. It doesn't create electricity at all. All it generates is heat for water. Here's a picture of a solar heating panel. These might look like solar power cells on first glance, but you can actually see through them. These pipes carry water from the house, and they pump the water through a bunch of tiny little pipes, and those pipes are exposed to the heat from the sun, which allows the water to heat up. The water is pumped through the house, goes through the little pipes, heats up, and comes back into your home nice and warm. Here's another picture of a different setup for solar heating panels. So what's the energy transformation in a solar heating panel? You take solar energy from the sunlight and convert it into internal energy of the water, making that water nice and hot for a bath, or washing dishes and so forth. Just like we use the intensity equation for solar power cells, we can use the same intensity equation for solar heating panels that produce heat.